When the Nintendo Switch launched in the spring of 2017, in the shadow of the Wii U's commercial failure, it remained to be seen whether Nintendo had released another dud or created a new paradigm in console video gaming. But by the time the Switch celebrated its second birthday, it had firmly established itself as a force to be reckoned with. Between the strong lineup of first-party titles, increased support from third-party developers, and the entry of limited print publishers into Nintendo's ecosystem, the Switch's second year set the system up to become one of the greatest consoles of all time. On this episode of Skull, let's read The Switch Collector, Volume 2, Part 2, by Jeffrey Wittenhagen. A huge thank you to Chris from Classic Gaming Quarterly for recording that intro for me. How's it going, YouTube? This is Skull, and as you guys probably know, I am a huge fan of the Nintendo Switch. You see all those Switch consoles I got behind me? I got nine of them now. <laughs> and uh, at my peak, I owned close to 500 physical Switch games. I've gotten rid of a lot of them, uh, but what I still have is uh, in those boxes behind me because my apartment doesn't allow for me to uh, put up shelves that I can anchor to the walls. So until I get a place of my own, they're in the boxes. But anyway, point is, I love the Nintendo Switch. That's why several years ago, I backed the Switch Collector book by Jeffrey Wittenhagen on Kickstarter. And um, of course, when it released, I made a whole video showing this off. And uh, that video did pretty well. People really liked to take a look at it. And uh, apparently people really liked this book because Jeff went ahead and made another book for the Switch's second year. But despite this being so much thicker than the first book, this was only able to cover the first half of the Switch's second year. So what did he have to do? Of course, he had to make a third book to cover the Switch's second year. And uh, today, I am going to be reading it. So, um... Sit back, relax, we're in it for the long run. You guys saw how long the video is, so let's go ahead and read The Switch Collector, Volume 2, Part 2. All right, let's go ahead and look at this. Well, first of all, let's just go ahead and look at the cover. Uh, I always love the uh, Switch Collector covers because it gives a nice overview of what all released on the Switch that year. So we got Shantae... Uh, that uh, Monster Boy, if I remember right. Of course, Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I guess that's to represent um, Super Smash Brothers because it's Simon Belmont. Uh, Yoshi and Mario and Ukulele and Super Meat Boy, Katamari Damacy, uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and a few others, of course. Just an absolutely beautiful cover, as you can see. Um, then, of course, here on the back, we've got this uh, nice blurb overview of what all's inside. Physical releases. The Nintendo Switch Collector's Guide that you need continues. Plus selected digital titles. And that's something that they always do here is uh, it doesn't just focus on physical games, although that is the main focus. It also gives a nice overview of some great digital games that released during this uh, year as well. So you'll notice that this is the Switch Collector Abridged Volume 2 Part 2, and that it is actually a lot thinner than Volume 2 Part 1. In fact, I think this is thinner than Volume 1. And that's because um, Jeff Wittenhagen, the author and editor of this, uh, realized that it would take a very, very long time to uh, get the the books made if we continue to make them as big as they have been. So this is the abridged version. There's still plenty here for you to look at. It's still chock full of information. But that is uh, why it's abridged. And that's why all future versions will be abridged as well. There will no longer be part, like, it won't be part volume three, part one. It'll only ever be volume three, volume four. So future years of the Switch collector will be a single volume, though more abridged than the previous ones have been. So right in the front here, we got this beautiful art of Monster Boy. Oh man, absolutely beautiful. And uh, I think, if I remember right, all of this art is commissioned specifically for this book. This isn't like something that was made by the people who made Monster Boy. It is straight up made just for this book. And I'm also not going to go completely through this as fast as it should be, uh, despite, or uh, uh, I'm not going to go completely through this going like 
looking at every single page in detail, even though Chris from Classic Gaming Quarterly did introduce this video. <laughs> anyway, so nice uh, look at a whole ton of characters. Wait, are these all the characters that are in Super Smash Brothers? I think they are. <laughs> How about that? Okay. So we got the uh, copyright information here. Archives of a Warped Mind. And this is the introduction by Jeff Wickenhagen. And, um, I mean, you could go ahead and pause this if you want, but as always with this, I highly recommend you guys just pick up a book for yourself, especially if you're into the Switch like I am. And, yeah, um, as you can see here, uh, when I finished up Volume 2 of this insane project, which initially began as an April Fool's joke, it ended up taking close to a year to get printed and into everyone's hands. It would take 18 years just to get caught up to where we are now. I mean, right now, as of the time I'm recording this video, the Switch is well into its sixth year. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom just released last month. And, uh, yeah, he's this is his reasoning for why all future versions are going to be abridged. Also, of course, pointing out the creation of Premium Edition Games, which is a uh, limited print company that was co-created by Jeff, as well as a bunch of other people that are very prominent in the Switch collecting community. So that's pretty awesome that, that we have a company that is run by collectors. <laughs> um, so there's the table of contents. I just love this uh, the Switch logo and uh, all that uh, like bleeding off. That just looks so cool. So... The second year concludes, <laughs> uh, concluded with a bang. We got, let's see, mentioning Super Smash Brothers, um, had New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Dark Souls Remastered, Mega Man 11, Diablo 3, Monster Hunter, a whole, whole lot <laughs> of uh, games, as well as a few new publishers here. We got B-Side Games, which that's actually the first I've heard of them. Hope I didn't miss anything important. Strictly Limited and Signature Edition. I'm pretty sure Strictly Limited, if I remember right, released Fox and Forest as, as their first release, and I remember really being excited to get that. Maybe we'll find out more about them later. So, here we go. Uh, so these are the games that started to be released in October, and I believe it goes through the end of February 2019. So it looks like the very first release was Worms WMD from Super Rare Games. I actually did have a complete Super Rare Games collection of their first 20 games. I ended up selling all of those as a bulk lot, um, just because I realized I didn't actually care for any of them. But it was kind of fun to get them all and uh, at least have the first 20. Uh, Super Mario Party, played that quite a bit. Of course, Mega Man 11, which was a highly anticipated release, and it also came with an Amiibo. <laughs> uh, for several years there, we, we really felt like the Amiibo was on death's door, but even since here, they've just managed to keep making an Amiibo here, an Amiibo there, and even now, there's still Amiibo releasing. We got the Tears of the Kingdom Link that just released. We've got, um, we got Pirate and Mithra coming out next month as well. Uh, Panda Hero. I don't remember that game. Cat Quest was kind of fun. Uh, it's, it's a nice little action platformer. Well, it's not an act, it's not a platformer, it's a role-playing game. <laughs> uh, Candle, The Power of the Flame, and Goosebumps the Game. I remember hearing something about Goosebumps. Oh yeah, developed by Way Forward. If Way Forward make, made a game you know what's going to be good. So, yeah, that's probably why I remember that. Uh, Disgaea 1 Complete, which I never played, but I did play Disgaea 5 when that released, and I remember having a whole lot of fun. It is a turn-based... Uh, it's a strategy RPG. So, um, a whole lot of fun, and uh, Disgaea 1 Complete, I remember when that came out, it was kind of a big deal. We got this collector's edition here. Uh, good luck getting one of those now. I'm pretty sure Nis published those and. This is notorious for doing pretty bad at stocking enough. World Ends With You Final Remix. Remember hearing about that a lot. Oh, published by Square Enix. Pilot Sports. Don't remember that. I guess this is a European exclusive. Uh, Big Buck Hunter Arcade. Now, I actually played that in the arcade quite a bit. I don't know about anyone else. Crayola Scoot is actually a whole lot of fun. Some people called it a Splatoon clone, but... Um, <laughs> but it, it's not. It's it's its own thing, and it's it's rather fun, if a little lacking in content. Flipping Death. 
I remember something about that. I feel like when that originally got a release, if it is the one I'm thinking of, it got originally a digital only release, but with an empty physical case that was limited to 2000 copies. And I remember some people actually getting that. And then it got a full on actual release with a cartridge, which nobody liked, uh, you know, when, when companies do that. DC Lego supervillains. All the Lego games are always fun. Starlink The Battle for Atlas. I remember this because this was actually one of the first games announced for the Switch. And it took almost three full years for it to release. Or two full years, my mistake. Um, and also, of course, it included Fox McCloud as a playable character. I remember actually kind of enjoying this game. And kind of being amazed that uh, Ubisoft can make a better Star Fox game than Nintendo. <laughs> Uh, Warriors Orochi 4, of course it's a Warriors game, Siberia 3. Siberia games I remember being European exclusives and having trouble importing them. Just Dance 2019, which, fun fact, also released on the Wii, but not the Wii U. That's the final Wii game ever made, and uh, here it is on the Switch as well. Just Dance is always just a huge seller for some reason. Uh, Dark Souls Remastered, actually, you know, I say that. Has Just Dance been released on the Switch lately? I don't remember. Dark Souls Remastered, huge hit on the Switch, Nickelodeon Kart Racers, and actually, fun fact, on the spine of this, Nickelodeon is misspelled. It's spelled on the spine N-I-C-K-L-E instead of E-L, which I think is kind of funny. Paw Patrol on a Roll, I forget if that was a Walmart exclusive, I think it might have been. I remember trying to get it and having a hard time. <laughs> uh, Rapala Pro Series Fishing. Um, this looks like an Asian exclusive that I don't recognize. World Neverland. I don't, rem I don't remember that. Chicken Range, European exclusive. Let's Sing. Now, Let's Sing has about a hundred variants. There are people who try and collect them all, but it feels like there's literally, I mean literally, maybe over a dozen variants of Let's Sing 2019 uh, for covers and accessories and languages and all that stuff. It's Kind of um, insane how many variants that got. Uh, My Hero One's Justice. It's a My Hero game. Uh, America's Game Shows. Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. Just game shows. 2018 is when shovelware finally started coming to the Switch. 2017 had a few, but 2018 is when they really started just releasing a whole ton of stuff on the Switch that most people would look at and consider to be shovelware. Like BB and Tina, BB Blossberg. Um... Heck, uh, Monopoly, uh, or this is just Hasbro Games. Um, <laughs> anyway, Escapist 2, great game. Actually, really recommend it. Gal Metal World Tour is a, uh, it's a music game. It's kind of fun. And I just remember getting this mixed up with Gal Gun fairly often because that came out around the same time. And you let, trust me, you do not want to mix up Gal Metal and Gal Gun. <laughs> uh, Lego Harry Potter Collection trying to remember oh it says two classic games and one cartridge but i kind of feel like there was some controversy that it actually did require a download in order to get it i could be wrong but i kind of feel like that's correct that it actually wasn't both games on a cartridge or maybe it wasn't supposed to be but then after the backlash they did i don't remember for sure uh mutant football league um it's a uh, sports game. <laughs> it's a kind of a fun sports game, actually. Speaking of sports games, Sports Party is kind of awesome because this is kind of like Wii Sports. Kind of. Uh, this made up for there being no Wii Sports on the Switch at the time. Let's see. Yomawari, Long Night Collection. I remember never actually getting this because well, by the time I ended up trying to get it, it was rather expensive. Uh, Deathmark... Um, I don't think I got that either. Oxen Free from Limited Run Games, number ten from them. How many are they up to on the Switch now? I feel like it's over a hundred. It's it's crazy back here where it was a finite number. Now they're just releasing so many. Um, Taiko no Tatsujin Drum and Fun. I remember when this came out, it was actually a big deal. Because in North America, it didn't come with the drums. You had to import the version to get the drums. The whole point of getting the game. And uh, I remember that being a rather popular import. And rightfully so. It's actually a fun game. Uh, Diablo 3. Great to see that on the Switch. Carnival Games. 
kind of shovelware grip is a racing game. Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 um, from Telltale. I remember when this came out, and then Telltale went out of business like right afterwards, and that shot this thing up in popularity quite a bit because everyone assumed that that would only get a single print, and uh, since it's Minecraft, that it would be rather valuable later. Well, it turns out they just kept printing more and more of it even after Telltale went out, so um, it's not that uncommon of a game now. But I remember... I remember that story of it being kind of <laughs> kind of hard to get at the time. Uh, Thumper from Limited Run. Uh, Snake Pass from Super Rare Games. Of course, this was one of the big games that Super Rare got a hold of because Snake Pass, is it, when it released, it was one of the must-buy digital-only games on the Switch, mainly because we didn't have that much else when this came out. Then it got a physical release from Super Rare, and I feel like that's actually worth quite a bit still, if I remember right. Uh, the Strike Championship Edition, Bass Pro Shops, and Cabela's. You know, more of the same uh, fishing games and hunting games. You'll see quite a few of those on any platform if they live long enough. Uh, but the Switch especially. Moonlighter. Now, this was an interesting release. Um, I just remember it kind of coming out of nowhere. And people just... Um, excusing it as like, eh, it's not that good. But you know what? It's actually kind of fun. And it did get a uh, limited release from Signature Edition. And the way Signature Edition works is, for the most part, they actually don't release their own games. They actually re-release um, public games or, or um, you know, games that got a retail release, but they re-release it with extra stuff, which I think is kind of cool. And in my opinion, what most limited games should be. <laughs> Uh, NBA 2K Playgrounds, which I remember people really wanted to like that, but they just couldn't like it. <laughs> um, Party Arcade, more shovelware. Uh, let's see, uh, that's shovelware. Project High Rise, I remember some people liking it. Um, it's a, um, it's a, it's kind of like SimCity, kind of. Um, I mean, you can get a guess of what it is just by looking at that. Uh, SNK 40th was a big hit, as a matter of fact. People really liked this. Of course, it's SNK, um, so, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, the uh, big Pokemon games released that year, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I love these games. I know a lot of people say, oh, they're too simplistic or, or whatever, but you know what? I actually really, really like them. I did end up getting that Switch and both of these um, combo releases that came with a the game and the Pokeball Plus. And uh, I actually love Let's Go Pikachu so much, I'm trying to eventually get a living, shiny Pokédex out of it. It's going to be a long time coming, especially since I don't work on it that much anymore. But it is an eventual goal. I just love these games. Uh, first Pokémon games on Switch. <laughs> um, Shikondo, Soul Eater, I don't remember. Civ Six. Um, that was kind of a big deal when that came to Switch. A lot of people were like, wait, the Switch can run that? It can, and it can run it well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, that's pretty awesome. Trailblazers, I don't remember. I'm going to start going a little faster here. Golf Story from LRG, one of the big releases. Another one of those that everyone was like, oh, this needs a physical. It got one through LRG, and thankfully, I don't think this is too expensive on eBay. So, it, it sold incredibly well, so there's plenty of copies of gold around. Uh, Kingdom New Lands from LRG. Uh, let's see. Shovelware. N well, they're not shovelware, but you know. Not not worth me going into detail about. Bendy and the Ink Machine. I remember when this released. Yep, right there, as you can see. It was a GameStop exclusive. And why GameStop gets exclusive anything is beyond me. But um, yeah, well, a ton of people I know went to GameStop to get Bendy and the Ink Machine. And the GameStop that I went to actually didn't even know that it was an exclusive game. They they um, thought that it was getting a, a wide retail release. So when I went to pick it up, um, they I, I remember them mentioning that when I mentioned it was a GameStop exclusive. And the manager, I guess, overheard me because like as I was leaving, he grabbed all of the bendy all of the copies of the game, and I guess was gonna you know try and do, you know, scumming GameStop stuff with it anyway. Sick Yo! Fun series of shmups. Um, Yuri from LRG. Ukulele from LRG. 
Um, besides Celeste, this is probably the biggest release LRG has ever done. And of course, it did get a release at Best Buy. I think beginning with Ukulele or around there, LRG started releasing a lot of their games through Best Buy as well. So if you didn't get it, through their website in time, then you could go to Best Buy and get a copy with an alternate cover. Uh, heck, I think Best Buy might still be selling copies of Ukulele. I could be wrong. It has been, you know, five years since this released. But I remember that was one of the big things about it was I, I don't remember if they actually announced that beforehand that they were going to do a Best Buy release or if after it closed, they said we're also doing a Best Buy release afterwards. I, I just know right around here is when they started doing that. Um... I don't recognize any of these. Common Rider, I recognize actually. Uh, N plus plus from Super Rare. I've heard great things about that. Ark. <laughs> when that released, it was one of the worst games on the Switch, if not the worst game on the Switch, because it was so poorly optimized. It was. It ran at like 200, 240p. Um, it had r horrible popping, a lot of blurring. A, like it was a horrible game. I've heard that they've made it better since then but part of me also feels like grabbing my copy that I still have plopping it in and trying it without updating it first just to see what it's like <laughs> oh man I remember that Atari flashback I'm pretty sure this was an exclusive to somewhere I don't remember where was it a uh, Target exclusive or a Walmart exclusive I feel like it was an exclusive to somewhere I don't remember Roller Coaster Tycoon I know for a fact was an exclusive again I don't remember where though I feel like feel like that might have been on Walmart and that at Target or or something like that. Gear Club Unlimited 2. I remember the first Gear Club Unlimited mostly because the first one in 2018 was the last game I needed to get in order to complete my Switch Year 1 collection. Then I never did get two. <laughs> Monster Boy, big release, and The Cursed Kingdom runs great on Switch, an excellent way of playing the game. And of course, look at this beautiful collector's edition that it got. Uh, we got Toki, which was released only in Europe, but it's a great little game. Um, Katamari Damacy, which I'm pretty sure was a GameStop exclusive when it released. I remember in order to get that, I had to go to a town literally 75 miles away. I spent all day driving there, grabbed it, and drove back. And then it got a second printing the next week. <laughs> so I've at least got that story to go with uh, me picking up the game. Uh, Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek. The first Hello Neighbor did bonkers on Switch when it released year one. Second, so they made a second game, which is obviously a cash grab. It didn't. It, it's a. It's not a good game. Uh, Genesis Classics. Um, ton of Genesis games, and then of course the other big release of uh, winter 2018 was Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and I remember actually getting this special edition with the controller, and uh, it didn't come with the case. So I ended up making a trade of the, the steel book that this came with for the game case. And I just made a straight trade. I know I lost money. It's okay. Uh, of course, one of the best selling games of all time now. It's kind of crazy to see. Uh, let's see. Um, Kunio Kun. I remember hearing a lot about that. Battle Princess Madeline. Do not sleep on this game. This is absolutely worth picking up and trying out. It's a lot of fun. I feel like it ended up getting a limited run game release later, but here you can see this is the um, Asian release. Um, don't see anything I recognize. Fitness Boxing. I, huh, I remember, for some reason, this ended up being becoming a really expensive game. Like, it, it got up to like 60, 70 bucks. Uh, and I remember never getting it because of that. And that's part of the reason why I stopped trying to get all games. It's just like, if fitness freaking boxing is a $70 game, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, let's see, Super Air Games 9, Steradin, and LRG 16, Broken Age. Oh, let's see here. New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. I remember when that came out. And everyone was like, oh, why are they porting Wii U games straight to the Switch? Well, <laughs> this outsold the Wii U version by like three to one. So that should tell you. Tales of Vesperia. Always great to see the Tales series making new appearances. Uh, let's see. Layers of Fear Legacy. Now, this is actually published by Limited Run Games, but it is not part of their numbered series. And they've started doing this a lot more often than I care for, where they will release a game that you can only buy from their store, but 
it's not a part of their numbered releases. Like, uh, what's the point? I, I've never understood it. Um, Adventure Pals, SRG number 10. Uh, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. I remember when that came out, it, it was a big deal. Everyone seemed to be super excited. And it was a Switch exclusive when it released, too. Um, I never played it, so I don't know what the big deal is. But yeah, that was a big deal when that released. Uh, let's see. Um, Demo is a rhythm game, and it's a lot of fun. Cosmic Star Heroine, terrific game. Of course, limited run games. Uh, we started at, like, LRG number 7, and here, just a few months later, what we started October was 7, and now in January, we're up to 20 already. Yeah, that should sh- that goes to show just how um, aggressive they were with starting to put stuff out. Uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy is a PlayStation 2 game that just got a straight port to Switch. It's actually a pretty good port. Uh, Knights of Pen and Paper, SRG number 11, and number number 12 is Knights of Pen and Paper 2. This was a double pack, which was kind of fun. Uh, Stardew Valley, big deal when that released. Everyone wanted it. I believe it got, uh, I believe this is the Asian version and it didn't get an uh, release in North America until maybe a year or two later. It did take its sweet time coming out over here. Uh, Battle Chef Brigade, LRG number 19. Um, mostly just shovelware. Blaze Blue is a fighting game. It's actually not bad. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a fighting game guy. I I'm really bad at them, but I actually did enjoy playing Blaze Blue Blaze Blue quite a bit. Um, let's see, Super Meat Boy when that released, big deal. Uh, LRG exclusive. As far as I can think, we're still waiting on Super Meat Boy forever. I don't know. Maybe they've released it since then. Um, Liar and the Blind Prince. It's kind of a fun little game. Also kind of hard to find because <laughs> NIS printed it, NIS. Uh, Dragons Don New Riders. It's, you know, How to Train a Dragon tie-in. Whatever happened to making tie-ins for movies and TV shows? I, I miss those days. Some of the best games that I've ever played are tie-ins, like Toy Story 2, anyone? Oh, yeah. And, of course, this comes with uh, these two <laughs> uh, bookmarks here. Uh, let's see. West of Loathing is an LRG game. And I remember this mostly just because when I went to PAX East 2019, LRG had a booth set up and one of my friends who went with me picked this up physically. I of course ordered it, but that was the first time I'd ever seen anyone buy an LRG game in person. (laughs) Anyway, Outlast from LRG, never a fan of horror, so I didn't care about that. Steins Gate Elite is a visual novel. And I have a friend in Canada who loves visual novels, and they told me this is uh, one of the best. So I'll just have to take their word on it. (laughs) Uh, Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney Trilogy released in Japan only. I don't think it ever did get a physical release in North America. Uh, Pixel Junk Monsters 2. I remember this. They, They, you see how it says number four? It's because they literally put it up for order like almost a year prior to actually, actually, sending it out i think that their excuse was they were waiting on a patch to make it all finished and stuff but it was just so annoying that like it was only their fourth switch game and it still took almost a year to get it into people's hands uh hell rg um let's see world of final fantasy Mo- uh, maxima i'm pretty sure this is the first physical final fantasy game that we got on switch if memory serves right um, Dust and Elysium Tale, which is from LRG. I love, I love, <laughs> look at that little guy. He's adorable. Um, Aces of Luftwaffe, which, oh, Luftwaffe. Um, I never did get. <laughs> Child of Light and Valiant Hearts Double Pack ended up being a really expensive game later. <laughs> um, Constructor Plus. I remember that got announced and then didn't release for about a year. There was this weird time where, as Switch fans, we... New games were going to come out, we just didn't know when, and companies just sort of kept delaying it, delaying it, until finally one day it just suddenly released, and and Constructor Plus was one of those. Um, Origami, I'm pretty sure, is a pretty good game. Um, Oh, of course, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, LRG number 21. Shantae Half Genie Hero got a physical retail release, but every other Shantae game on the Switch has gone through LRG. I'm pretty sure LRG has a monopoly or some kind of exclusivity contract with um, WayForward to only use LRG to print their games. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So yeah, 
Pirate's Curse coming to Switch, big deal. All the Shantae games eventually came to Switch, of course. Remy Lore, great game from Nicali's. Uh, Trials Rising. I remember when that released, that was actually kind of a big deal. That it was a uh, big Ubisoft game that was releasing on the Switch the same day and with all the same content as every other port. And I remember when Trials Rising came out, it was one of the first times that the Switch was seriously looked on by the gaming community as, oh, just as good and just as uh, as much of an option as everything else. Lego Movie 2, great. Uh, Darius, great. <laughs> um, and here we go, Fox and Forest. Yep, first game released by Strictly Limited. I did get this collector's edition. It's beautiful. I'm glad that I got it. I'm glad to have it. Uh, Fox and Forest is a, a great game that's really reminiscent of like 16-bit platformer adventure games. So highly, highly recommend that. And Strictly Limited knocked it out of the park with their very first release. So, uh, oh, let's see here. Oh, that was it. That's the end of that's the end of year two. Um, so that brings us up to the end of year two. And yeah, Fosicles. Now, Fosicles, as you can see here, are where it's kind of similar to that one game I was talking about earlier, where they sell the case, but there's no cartridge inside. It's just a download code for the game. And these turned out to be rather popular in Europe. They still make plenty of these in Europe because they're only like 20 bucks a game. Um, but of course it doesn't come with a cartridge. It's just the g code for the game. Um, I remember when Fortnite came out, you know, of course, Fort this was when Fortnite was at its peak, so it was popular, but I remember a lot of people played Fortnite on Switch, uh, myself included. Um, non-English physicals. So these are games that were released in other countries and do not have English on the cartridge. All the other ones that was like, oh, that released in Asia, like Stardew Valley. Those have English, so if you import it, it still plays in English. These do not. So I don't see a point in really going into depth on any of these, but these are probably really good games. Uh, that's in German, of all things. I remember a few German games that I struggled to get. Um, Germany actually has quite a few exclusives. Uh, exclusive games that weren't released anywhere else, not even Japan or the rest of Europe. Um, but yeah, just a whole lot of great games here. Um, so, and then we got some digital exclusives that we want to see get a physical someday. I'm just going to skip over this. Um, if there's any digital only games that you guys want to see on Switch, let me know in the uh, in the comments. Uh, is Brawlhalla seriously still doesn't have a physical? No way. Wow, I would have figured that I'd have gotten one by now. Uh, let's see. Oh, Super Hydro, um, Hydro, Hydora. Holy cow, I can, I can say things. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I actually recognize quite a few of these, and I'm shocked that they don't have a physical yet. Maybe someday, hopefully someday. Um, let's just go ahead and, uh, Revenge of the Bird King. I'm positive LRG is going to troll us with the release of that someday. Um, let's just go ahead and skip forward here past all these digital only games oh yeah delta rune too that doesn't have a release yet <laughs> hopefully someday undertale got one so why not and here we go some indie publisher spotlights oh this is nice so um yeah signature edition games of course like i said where um they take retail games but give them a uh limited edition with extra goodies uh, strictly limited, like I said, uh, they were in charge of Fox and Forest. All of their releases are just absolutely gorgeous. They're expensive, but you get what you pay for, and you really feel like you've got something premium and something special in your hands when you when you get it. I'm struggling to grab the pages here. Um, B side, again, I do not know who this is. <laughs> um, sad day of August 2021, when B side announced they would be ceasing operations. Only six total numbered releases and two bundles that are unnumbered variant releases. Wow. Oh, Golf Story and Cat Quest are two of them. Huh. I'm unfamiliar with them. So, anyway. Community contributors. So, this is where if people um, backed the project, they would be able to post their um, comments and stuff. So, we got a few people here, some of whom have contributed to previous um switch collector books and some who are brand new to this look at this guy's setup that is really good setup um so 
Let's see. Oh, yeah. We've got the president of FDG Entertainment, which made Monster Boy. Uh, we got <laughs> the whole Monster Boy team here on launch day, which is awesome. And then, of course, here's me. <laughs> you probably saw that if the book was um, flipping over um, earlier. But, yeah, there's me with a bunch of my uh, consoles. I actually have more than this now. <laughs> um, you can read my. You can pause the video and read my uh, essay here. Uh, Switch year two was a huge year, and I'm very, very happy about that. Um, then we got a few more people here. And, of course, all the backers. So everyone who contributed to this project is here. And I'm looking forward to backing the Switch Collector Volume 3 whenever that goes up. So, and then here in the back, we got some ads. <laughs> Video Games Monthly, I have used them. It's a lot of fun if you don't care what you get. If you're just trying to get quantity over quality, definitely consider checking them out. Not sponsored, just genuinely liked using them. Um, the Switch Player is actually a, a physical magazine for the Nintendo Switch. And that's pretty awesome. So um, I, I haven't ever backed them. I never bought an issue from them. But I've seen their work. They work really hard. Um, and about of the author... A uh, bunch of other books he's written. Um, I, of course, have all the Switch volumes, but I also have the one for Virtual Boy. <laughs> um, yeah, Th Jeff's work is amazing. Highly recommend you check it out. And here at the end, we've got um, this nice art here. And finally, this, which I'm actually not sure which game this is from. Is this from Monster Boy? <laughs> I don't know if this is from Monster Boy or not. No, that's from Monster Boy. I'm not sure what this is from. I actually feel bad that I don't know. And that brings this read-through to a close. That was The Switch Collector Abridged, Volume 2, Part 2. So I hope you all enjoyed this read-through of this book. I am very proud to have backed it once again. And trust me, whenever The Switch Collector Volume 3 releases... I'll be backing that on Kickstarter, and I will be reading through it just like I did here with all these past three books. All three of these are actually still available for you to buy if you want a copy for yourself. The link is in the description, of course. Uh, once again, thank you to Classic Gaming Quarterly for recording the intro to this video. Very much appreciated. Uh, that brings this video to an end. Thanks everyone for watching, and stay tuned for more.